And thank you for being here, for fostering poetry in Ventura. I'm just so grateful. I walked in one Thursday night and was so amazed. And I have learned so much from all of you guys. So here it is. <laughs> I, I'm going to try something. I'm having trouble with my eyes. So this seems to work best, so I'll see. Closer? Okay. So these poems are kind of in chronological order, more or less. Um, I think the rest you should figure out from the poems, maybe. This one's called Dancing in Fairbanks. When I last tangoed, I was 13 in the arms of a buttery dance instructor. His eyebrows black, upswept like ravens flying. My feet followed his across the uneven floor, warped by the wrong side riverside of town. He pulled me into the urgent beat, his thigh to my thigh. I imagined myself a woman high heels orchid on my wrist. I tried to find the quick, quick slow, tried to be the milongera in his arms. Later, my friends and I skipped rope in dingy snow, followed the crack of breaking ice down river to the Dairy Queen. <laughs> My blue dress, this is about the same time, and in Fairbanks. My blue dress, I sewed it from fabric number 127 in this year's catalog, shade G. Place the buttons carefully, heart-shaped from neck to hem. It was a dress so blue, when I wore it, ravens stared, so bright, Teachers called on me first to get a full-eyed, unobstructed view. <laughs> My fifth grade schoolmates edged away, hunched over peanut butter, tried to decide whether blue was cool, whether a girl wearing a dress with heart buttons could be trusted. <laughs> This poem is a shaped poem. It's called His 1978 Toyota Truck. So I'm hoping <laughs> you can see. Okay. He wore it like a second pair of overalls, drove it as if it were a surly team of sled dogs, berated, cajoled, cherished every junkyard part, every scratch, every dent, had to sit on, no, sorry, every one of the 300,000 miles. A big man, he broke the seat down, had to sit on pillows, wore the paint to the metal of the window frame with his arm. Toward the end, it wouldn't start without a blast of carburetor spray. It rattled and popped 28 years until he was gone until I kept it in front of the house, until neighbors complained, until police issued warnings, until it was dragged off by a tow truck driver in a big ass hurry. <laughs> it's kind of hard to read a shaped poem. I just <laughs> kind of had to follow it around, okay. This is called The Man and My Horse. The man, the man who was my boyfriend, bought me two horses, two saddles, knew I was afraid of horses and couldn't ride. Ulysses, the gray thoroughbred, looked down his imperial nose, dismissed me, dumped me, watched from a distance as the man who was my boyfriend and his cowboy friends laughed, shouted, get up, get back on until I did. A baby could ride this horse, said the boyfriend, when he brought me crazy horse. And I could ride him, 
up hills into canyons. He refused to jump over anything I couldn't handle, was afraid of nothing, not even rattlesnakes. One of the old cowboys saw me kiss Crazy Horse on the nose, laughed until he fell on his ass. Shut up, said Crazy Horse, and the old geezer did. The man, who was my boyfriend, married me, sold my saddles, sold Crazy Horse, tightened his hold on the reins. <clears throat> this is called My Guy. It's kind of a different poem for me. So, My Guy. You were a big man, a jelly roll man, a let's have some fun man. You were a humble man, a buzz, a mumble, a blue-eyed sweet tumble. You could be a sad man, hard cowboy man, drown me in the rumble of a mountain man. You could be a jolly man, a give you all I got man. You were a good guy, hold on to your friend's guy, a guy's guy, everybody loves your guy. A barnacle for fingers man, a never let you go man, hard hugging man, you hugged me like, all, like an all you can eat pizza man, like a Hershey candy bar man. You held me till you fell like a wounded pine, like a never getting up fall. You took me down to the ground down, a never getting up down. So we were married for 31 years and, and went together 10 years before that through horses and all of that. <clears throat> this is, oh, I was going to tell you, most everything I'm, in my poetry is true. Some of it actually happened, just so you know. <laughs> in the beginning, a fantasy. Before Eve and Adam trimmed bougainvillea, orange trees, arranged patio furniture, picked the avocado, tumbleweeds ruled the garden. It was at the foot of South Mountain, near Sespe Creek. They strolled about, talked with bees, listened to lizards. God walked through the garden, spent evenings with the tumbleweeds. Enjoyed jamming with them, played rockabilly, bluegrass with the tumbleweed <coughs> band. After God created his mud creatures, he stopped conversing with plants, listened to Adam, who worked hard, sprayed poison to get rid of weeds altogether. Now, when tumbleweeds have something to say, they talk to lizards, to the lizards of Santa Paula, Together, they plan the next catastrophe, something to do with floods and earthquakes, nothing to do with God. I love Santa Paula. So I've been there four years. It's just a crazy, amazing place. And South Mountain, I look at South Mountain every day and it feels like my mountain. <laughs> anyway, I love it. <clears throat> this is by popular request. It's called, We Do Not Say Love. Your black eyes fill me, a universe of dark matter. No light can escape, no words. Your mouth on mine, I touch you, your earlobe, your ankle, your thigh. Find form in your lips. Your ass so beautiful, women at Kmart stop to stare. <laughs> you slip your arms through mine. Feel my breath against your chest. We find each other, meld together, as if we were ice and cream. Lick the bowl. Mm 
<clears throat> so anyway, I'll ask, I'll ask you, how do I know your heart? I hear you speak, see your amber eyes slide to obsidian, touch your hands, they talk, but how can I know what you are thinking? How do I know whom you love? At which moment? I enter the aura that burns the shape of you against the night. How can I know on which side of you I lay? The road of you or the field? I listen, afraid to hear water washing over asphalt, afraid to fly <coughs> over disputed territory. This is the same person as the previous poem. <clears throat> this morning, this is the one that, that Phil had on the email. This morning, 5.30 a.m., you in your Chevy truck, Raider sticker in the window, I warm in bed, you and I on the phone, all of LA between us, a lazy conversation about anything about us. This evening, 8.30 p.m. I think about last summer, the fort with the pirate flag, soft sand, seashells. I blow up a yellow balloon, hold it tight, hold it in case you can't make it or I can't. Okay, this is, I brought another, this is an ekphrastic poem. So um, I brought the reference. And if it's okay, I'm gonna put it up while I read the poem. It's a, it's a two part piece that I made as, it's a monoprint. Oh, it, <laughs> yes, it's a print, but it's made so that actually only one image per plate is made. So, and this was done on something called a gel plate. So it's a print and then it's partly collage. Um, okay, so wait, yes, go to sleep. Okay, she waits for the 637 at Burbank train station. And that's the train I actually rode to work every day for years. He looks sideways at her from under eyebrows like ocean waves, looks at her as if he wants to hold her hand, as if he wants to drape a scarf around her neck, take her for a ride to Chatsworth on his bike. He is so beautiful she cannot see him accustomed as she is to what life presents. The scabby cross-eyed cat, the three-legged dog, Stephen in the ninth grade. She does notice his princely crown, thinks she might make herself one from an oatmeal can. And for a moment, she wonders what it is like to kiss his perfect mouth. Thank you. You sure? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. And this is actually the last one, <clears throat> I think. Oh, no, I put it. It's not. Okay. <laughs> I, ch I changed it at the last minute. Okay. This is called The Bear. He is draped like a coat dropped in a hurry, piled into a broken chair. Not the whole bear, just his pelt. Rough, brown, dusty. He smells like old shoes, like pine trees. I cannot stop myself 
touch his ears, imagine his breath against my skin. D of Don and D offers to sell him, wants 250, but would take less. I want to buy him, take him home. I think of him, hungry for salmon, want to stand next to him, catch our dinner in a noisy, shallow stream. <clears throat> okay, this is called Slap Dash Daughter. I used, to, I used to know my way around mom's kitchen. We built pasties together from her recipe. Meat, potatoes, carrots, butter, pie dough from scratch. Ketchup, her secret ingredient. Mom's apple pie became mine, baked in her dented aluminum pie tin. I make chocolate chip cookies in my own kitchen. Step by step, read every direction on the bag. Although, after 60 years, I could do it blindfolded. I tried to make them the way m mom taught me, but I cut corners, cheat on preheating the oven, never sift the dry ingredients, add eggs unbeaten. I want to say, sorry, mom, but she is gone. This is called <clears throat> My Mother, the Son. I don't think I've ever talked this long. <laughs> <laughs> My Mother, the Son. You taught me how to wash dishes, tuck corners. You told me silverware is stacked. The towel must be replaced if it drops to the floor showed me how to iron. I see photos of you and your father standing on a slanted porch on a riverbank. He, so proud, you, tipped away from him, not smiling. You never told me your father was a fine man, that you loved him. It must have been a silent house on the hill next to the copper mine. <clears throat> okay, this is called pantomimes. An egret, an egret slides against the tree line, slips toward the river, through fog, like a silver stitch pulled through silk, disappears into a rondo and brush. The crow in my pepper tree appears to have something on her mind. Gives me the corvid eye. Says nothing. Larry, who lives across the street, shouts, screams, says fuck, till the air is so thick only dogs hear him. I beg for stories from my royal princess mom. How she fished for trout in Montana won a medal for basketball. I ask about the night her father came home drunk, the night that stops her from telling me anything I need to know. And this, this is my most recent poem. This is my last poem. It's called Sometimes sleep steps off the path, becomes a train whistle at 3 a.m., illuminates grandma's rocking chair. Sleep argues against my trip to Montana, hears a knock against the wall, listens for the brick to hit the street. Sleep runs with coyotes in the field behind my house. Sleep hides in my pillow, says the line of pelicans by the side of the road is not hallucination. The overstuffed chair on its way to Alaska 
flirts with sleep, peers up from beneath a warm woolen cap. Sleep sings a song from the old book of hymns, rearranges my furniture, springs a drunk from jail. Sleep wanders out to the barn to check the horses, rattles the lock, carries the gun. Sleep is an owl, wings outspread from one tree to the next. Sleep is a promise, demands a ransom, expects a reward.